Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, I'm scrunched down here. I'm killing myself laughing because I keep falling backwards. I'm scrunched down to fit this here Swan Voyager in the picture with me before it starts raining. So what is the Swan Voyager? Well, this is a new product by HEQ. You've seen me review the Swan K1 Pro versions one and two. So version one, you would look at a controller, fly this thing straight up, it turns into a plane and you fly around for about an hour of flight time looking at a controller. You see the display from the camera up front, but you could not record video. You had to put an action camera in version one and version two. Version two was the one with the FPV goggles where you had a DJI FPV system sending you back the video. You could record the video in your goggles, but it was pretty much low res at 720p. So a lot of people kept asking, hey, can you make one with a three axis gimbal? And guess what they did? Here it is. The Swan Voyager is brand new and has a three axis camera gimbal right here. So just like the previous versions, you get an hour flight time. Well, they say an hour. I never did get an hour in the previous versions, more like 40 or 45 minutes of flight time. You have an eight kilometer range. You could probably go farther because the transmitter, which I'm going to show you in a second, is very powerful. The camera up front is 4K 30 frames per second with a 12 megapixel sensor for photos. You can move it up and down while you're flying and look around all over the place. And it is a three axis gimbal. So when you're bouncing around in the air, it stays quite nice and steady. So this is a great item, but it is in beta still. It's not yet released to the public and they do have a nice off the shelf controller, which is pretty amazing. I've never seen a controller this nice in a long time. It's a 1000 nit display, super bright out in the sun, waterproof. So it's really, really good. I'm going to tell you about all this in a second, but I just want to say once again, this is beta. It's not yet released to the public. And I think they're doing a Kickstarter coming up and you can pre-order it. They're still working on the software. They're still working on the drone and the camera and everything else before they release it to the public. So anyways, I have this beta version. I have the beta version of the software and I have flown it. And yes, it does require updating and tweaking and everything else. But, uh, you know, this video is just about showing you this so that you know it's coming and you can go pre-order it if you want. I'm going to put the links below. But how about I show you more in-depth stuff? So watch this. Here we have the case your Swan Voyager is shipped in. And this is what you use to transport it to the field to go flying. This would be the top side of the Swan Voyager. And this would be the belly side of the Swan Voyager. Here we have a close-up view of the 4K camera and the three-axis gimbal. Pretty much all the construction is metal, probably aluminum. There is some dampening built in because the motors will obviously cause a lot of vibrations. Now when you record videos or take photos, they are all recorded to a micro SD card and the micro SD card is right here inside this hatch. This hatch actually attaches just by magnets as you can see here. So when you put it back, it snaps in and it won't fall off in flight. The pitot tube for measuring airspeed is located here. In previous versions of the Swan, you had to calibrate it before every flight, but in this version, you only calibrate it once. The battery hatch is located back here and it is magnetically held in place. There is an XT60 battery connector inside. A battery is included. It is a 4S LiPo battery and a charger is included. You will notice that out of the four brushless motors, two of them have divots and two do not have divots. That's because two take one type of prop and the other two take another type of prop. So here you can see the prop with the black top is counter rotated and the prop with the silver top is clockwise rotated. Assembling the Swan is super simple. It takes about five minutes for a full assembly. Just line everything up, click things in place, slide things in place and you're done. Now let me show you the items that came with my Swan Voyagers. So I did receive a spare set of props. I did receive two batteries. I guess when you order it, you can pick one or two batteries. I also received a set of replacement stickers for the icons on the controller. This circuit board was also included. I'm not really sure what it is, but I believe it's some sort of programming device for the controller itself. Now let's take a really close look at that MK15 controller included with the Swan Voyager. Check this out. It's got a 1000 nit brightness screen. You can see that thing from miles outdoors. It has a 15 hour battery life so you don't have to charge it that often. You can be out in the rain. It's rainproof and you can even put a SIM card in it for your phone in case you want to get data for your maps. And of course you can put a micro SD card in it if you want. It's really, really good. Here's our picture. Gimbal. There you go. Yeah. So this is a bright display. Oh, that is Nice and brilliant. Yeah, so you get that. We would have loved this. And then this dial, you can move okay. up and down. Nice. Like can that. you move left or right? There you go. It looks good. Yeah, yeah, it's clear. Pick it up and just tilt it, aim it at me. You never want to have to land it like a plane though, because the camera is going to get just ripped. Yeah, so there we go. So it stays on me and then point it straight back up. 
Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So it stays perfectly straight. So. Yeah. So that's good. And now let's go through the physical features. The first button is your switch from vertical flight to horizontal flight. Then you have your power on off switch. Press it twice to power it on. Then you have your return to home switch. And then over here, this is your start video, stop video. And then over on the right, you have your take a photo. And then in the center, you have a three-way switch, which I have no idea what it does. And then you can see your joysticks are protected from the elements such as sand, dust, rain, snow, anything. Looking at the top, you have a three position switch on the left. If it's all the way down, that's GPS mode. If it's all the way up, GPS is off. Then you have your dial to move your camera up and down. That's the pitch. Next, we have the antenna. You can see you can bend it in any configuration and you can also remove it and replace it with higher dB gain antennas if desired. On the top right, you have a three position switch for centering your camera. Then you have a dial to move your camera left or right. And again, you have an antenna that you can move in different positions if desired. In the top center, you have an HDMI out followed by something that looks like for programming again. And then you have a USB out. Switching to the bottom, you can see you have a mount for a tripod. And then looking at the inputs on the bottom, you have your charging port, USB-C, which is also a data port. Then you have another port, which I have no idea what that is. Then you have a slot for a SIM card, followed by a slot for a micro SD card. And on each corner, you can see what appears to be speakers. Flipping this over, you can see on the back, you have the brand name and model. If you want to find the manual for this controller, just search for it on Google. Powering on the device requires that you press the button once, followed by a longer press. Then it will start up into Android. It will think it is a cell phone because that's the way it's designed. However, when it starts up, which is quite quick, you will have full access to everything. Since this is an Android device, you swipe down from the top to get your notifications and access to quick settings. The first thing you should do is go to the settings menu in Google and turn on the Wi-Fi and connect to your home Wi-Fi so you can get all the firmware updates. This device does come with 16 gigs of internal storage, but most of it is already taken up by the apps and operating system. The app you're going to want to use to control your Swan Voyager is called HEQ Fly. I just tapped on it. It's going to start up. And for some reason, for me, it always puts me in the Atlantic Ocean right off the coast of Africa. Taking a quick look at the app, we see our notification screen across the top. You want this to say GPS ready to fly. Then you have your notification messages right here. Next over is your satellites, number of satellites. You'll need at least nine or 10 to fly. Then that's just map data right here. Ignore all that stuff. Up top is the battery voltage of your drone. And then this is the menu you need to get into. Here are all your settings for your flight. You can see they all show zero because I am not connected to the Swan Voyager at the moment, but I will in a little bit. On your very first flight, you need to calibrate both of these items. Once they're calibrated, they will say calibrated. Next, I want to show you what firmware version I'm on, and I'm on version 1. When this gets better, it's going to say 1.02, 1.19, or something like that. But right now, version 1 is like very low. And no matter how much I tap on the update button, there is no new firmware. I also noticed that the ground control app is included on this device. That is for mission planning for waypoints for long, long range. I could not get it to work, so I've just ignored it. Now I've turned on the Swan Voyager, so the app will look different. Watch this. We're going to start up with it connected, and in the top center it says you cannot take off. There's no GPS, so that's a good sign. You need at least 9 or 10, and I'm going to click on the FPV view. This is what the camera sees, and this is what you see on your screen, and I can control the camera, so I can look down, and I can look up if I want, and uh, I can hit the record button, the video record button, and show you what the quality of the video is. So here we go. This is the quality and audio is actually recorded with the video. Please note that when you start the video record, there is no on-screen indicator to show you it is recording, nor is there any indication when you take photos. That is coming in a future update. And here's an example of the 12 megapixel photo, which actually looks pretty good. If your drone has a problem, you will get a notification. Watch this, I'm gonna show you one of those notifications. I'm trying to start the drone, but it tells me right there, it will not arm because there is no GPS to tell it where home is, because I have zero satellites. You can also see here that now all our flight data has been populated before when the drone was not connected. These all showed as zero, but now we all have numbers in them. However, currently there is a glitch in the software as well. I've reported it back to HEQ. If you try to change any of those numbers, the whole app will lock up and then you have to exit and restart. And when you restart the app, the numbers that you did input are now saved and you can see them on your screen. Here is a flight on a dull day. Here we go.
There she goes, baby! Now, because there's no indication that you're recording video, I was not recording video and I didn't know it. So here's some video taken from other people who flew this drone. You can see the camera is moving to the right. You can move to the left, check out your motors. If you want, you can look down at the ground as you're flying. While you're flying, you can move the camera all over the place and take video as you desire. All right, you saw all that. The rain has let off for a bit and the sun is sort of popping out a little bit, so I'm lit up. Um, what did you think of all that? Pretty cool, eh? So when they get this thing to 100% perfection, it's gonna be pretty darn good and a lot of people are gonna wanna buy it. But for now, you know, it's not really finished, at least in my view. You know, it's, it's probably okay to release to the public, but you're gonna be sitting there waiting for firmware updates to fix all the little bugs and to add the features that are missing. So they did tell me, camera settings into the app. You will have camera settings in the future. You will have notifications of, you know, recording, playback of video, or looking at photos on your screen. That doesn't exist at the moment. They are doing a multi-type uh, swan thing where I can have one, someone else can have one, and both of our feeds are on the same controller, both of our controllers, and we do races and all sorts of things. That's coming in the future. There's a lot of cool things coming to this based on viewer demand. So once again, I can't tell you much more because uh, mine's only at the point of just about being released but it still needs some tweaks so for now i say thanks for watching this video the links are below if you enjoyed this or you have questions well then post them below and if you wanted to say if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and i'll catch you in uh, future videos with many more cool products until then i say bye <laughs>